See, cortisol is, is, is to be there to protect us from infection. So, for example, you know, if, we're in, if, we, if we think of our ancestors, w there's been a sudden threat, adrenaline kicks in, that effect lasts about 40 minutes, sure. um, and then cortisol levels go up, and the cortisol levels there to prevent us getting ill until we're out of the danger zone. Because you don't want to get the flu or an infection. You don't want any infection into a scratch or anything like that. You might have got having a fight, right? Exactly. Right. So sure. that occurs in that in that crisis situation. But what happens if you're, like you said, a teacher, you're working hard, you're stressed, you know, your body's cortisol, high levels of cortisol, initially will protect you from infection. And then you go on holiday, you relax, your cortisol levels go down, and then you get ill. Yeah, I understand. So you're almost kind of protected for a short term from that infection. Yes, yeah. but if you do that for years on end, eventually you just burn out, and then eventually your body has not got the ability to regulate itself. Absolutely, understood. So would you would you say that kind of uh, this is uh, quite a um, uh, kind of we'll go on to talk about um, what the maybe what the NHS or the British uh, uh, medical world kind of recognise, but uh, this kind of I think you referred to it earlier adrenal fatigue is uh, quite a modern disease based on the fact that we, we, we're, we're generally uh, way overstressed from what we should be at the moment. Well, people get ill because it's continual stimulus. So we're not designed to be having the continual stimulus that we, we have. So we'll have stimulus from our work, and then you've got Facebook, you've got social media, you've got, um, you know, people got TV on all night, they've got, you know, they've got all these stimulus that goes in, and it's very stressful hormonally. Because we often think that stress is some kind of mental or emotional state. I mean, it is on one level, but it's biochemical. You know, I can test somebody's saliva and I, can, I measure people's adrenaline and cortisol levels. It's biochemical. So it's not just because you think you're stressed and therefore you're stressed. It's that your body is reacting biochemically to what's going on. So we are having inappropriate amounts of stimulus and because of this we get worn out so we have to kind of balance the kind of activity we do with also kind of extreme relaxation as well yeah so this is really relevant to like the weekend warrior who, who who's at work all week has a family at home uh, and then adds training on top of uh, uh, what they're doing so but essentially their training will bring about a stress response as well right they have the same fight or flight response whilst they're training unless it is something like a Tai Chi or a yoga practice or something like that. So, so these people are even more at risk of this, right? Absolutely. It's getting that blend right, isn't it? And you see that a lot. And then people then overall feel more more um, under pressure. So that actually rather than exercise then being something that's relieving and actually feels better, actually they can end up feeling more under pressure and actually worse. Yeah, like a slave to the numbers, I must do this, but then unfortunately you don't feel good at the end of it. So we need to change that paradigm, so therefore exercise then becomes something that people just love doing, and then go, my goodness, I feel better, and things are good, and that's what we need to do. And then when it progresses, then you feel even better, and it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's, a, continual, it's a continual thing, right? I get it, I get it. So, so within, the, just go on to talk a little bit about the, the sliding scale of uh, adrenal health and how... Um, you know, the NHS recognise uh, Addison's and Cushing's syndrome, but they, and why don't you explain a little bit about exactly what that is, uh, but then why, if you go to your doctor and you say, I think I've got uh, adrenal fatigue, they're not likely to say, oh yeah, I think you're right, why don't you, why don't you address your sleep or why don't you address your food? Why aren't they going to do that, mate? Yeah, it's unlikely. I mean, I mean, what, what will happen is that medically, for um, uh, if you go to a, yeah, you go to your GP or you go to a hospital or whatever, they'll, they, they look at a very extreme continuum with the adrenals. You're either hyper-producing adrenaline or you're not, uh, and cortisol, or, or you're not. Um, and therefore, th th they're in the remit of sort of the medical world, really, about whether, um, and, and there, there is extreme um, symptoms you get, and, and a medic would pick that up. What we're looking at is when, is in the continuum within that. So, for example, you know, at, at, um, at the moment, an NHS doctor is not going to measure your cortisol levels, your salivary cortisol levels through a 24-hour period of time, for example. Like, I'll get people to measure it in the morning, and then mid-morning, and then in the afternoon and in the evening, which gives me a profile. That's not going to happen at your GPs at the moment, because they're looking at, have you got a disease or not? 
Sure. And, and that's, that's a very definite cutoff when they see that, right? Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's a little bit like A&E, you know, is somebody internally bleeding or not? Have they got a broken leg or not? I mean, it's brilliant for those extreme situations, but there's no sense of a continuum between optimum health and illness, and there is a huge continuum between the two. Uh, so that, that is a huge continuum in itself. So w what, what we're, we're seeing is that it will, become a, it will be undetected. So, for example, one of, the, one, of the, one of the things is that people won't be able to lose weight. Cortisol will, um, your body will store fat in inappropriate places when your cortisol levels are out of balance. So for men, you'll store fat around the abdomen. You know, so it's, it's central, um, adi uh, central adipose tissue. So you, you, you'll, get, you'll get fat around your belly and you'll do all the training you want and everything else you start to put on muscle, you start to feel better, but people don't necessarily easily lose that abdominal fat. Yeah, and this, that's one of the things I, I notice when I go to endurance events now, Philip, is uh, the, the amount of people that look um, deconditioned actually doing the events. And that, that's, that's a real kind of indicator to me that they're not, uh, and that's kind of one of the inspirations for starting Tribal in the first place, was that people aren't really focusing on the health aspect uh, before they do these performance, uh, sorry, uh, uh, kind of extreme endurance events, because if they were, they they'd be changing shape radically. But mm -hmm. I do see a lot of kind of uh, fellas and uh, holding like uh, plenty of adipose tissue around their abdominal region, and I see like the females with plenty of adipose tissue around their their, their hips and their butt, um, and 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 unfortunately that that then is kind of a pre-indicator for. Uh, uh, further metabolic disease, which we see a lot now, right? Which is like diabetes, coronary heart disease. Kind of, I don't know if you want to kind of explain what the kind of the progression is from from that greater level of adipose tissue around the abdominal region to those metabolic conditions. Yeah, well, what happens is that the the, the uh, yeah the central adipose tissue um, predisposes people to all kinds of issues, and if that's already going on, the see, what's weird is that the fat around the belly itself becomes a factory of hormones. So right. the, the fat around the belly in itself will produce estrogen. Now a guy, middle-aged guy, does not want excess estrogen in his body. That's going to interfere with testosterone receptors, it's going to mess up performance, and, 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 and it's going it's to affect all kinds of different factors in his body. It can also mean that there's a tendency towards insulin resistance. So sugar balance becomes a problem. They can't regulate their blood sugars through the day properly. So having, having significant weight around the belly is a real problem for all kinds of it. It predisposes people to heart disease, sleep apnea, which is therefore going to cause blood pressure problems. So it's a real challenge that we got to do everything we can to get rid of that central adipose tissue and sometimes that might mean training less. Sure, no I completely agree or, or taking the intensity of the training down and right. adjusting the, the nourishment side of things right and the nutritional side of things. Correct because yeah, more stressed we are. Those things you're explaining like uh, inability to control blood sugars are just taking you further and further away from uh, high performance right you kind of you need to you need to, for an endurance event, you need to use fat as your primary fuel. If you can't control your blood sugars, uh, there's no way that you're going to choose to use fat as your fuel. Actually, you're going to only fuel with sugar and then feel the need to put more and more in. And that's where the, you know, the, the, the supplement companies kind of come in a lot, all the sugary kind of uh, sports drinks and things like that. People are overusing those during sessions when they really shouldn't be touching them, you know.